Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Secessionville, located in Charleston County, South Carolina, on June 16, 1862. On June 15, Union Major General David Hunter ordered Union Brigadier General Henry W. Benham to command the invading Union forces. Benham landed 10,000 men on James Island. The first portion of the men were under the command of Union Brigadier General Horatio G. Wright, Colonel Robert William, and Brigadier General Isaac Stevens, and they landed at a place called Thomas Grimball's Plantation. The remainder of the division took up position to the south on Battery and Soligar Islands. After a short time, General Hunter determined the Confederate forces were too strong and dug into defensive positions, ordering General Benham not to invade Charleston without specific instructions. Confederate forces on James Island actually numbered about 6,500 men and were under the command of Confederate Brigadier General Nathan G. Evans. His men were divided into a group of 4,400 men along the island's southern defensive line. Part of these defenses was a summer village called Secessionville, which contained an uncompleted earthen battery that faced a river. The 600 Confederates guarding this position were commanded by Confederate Colonel Thomas Lamar. Early in the day, the remaining Confederate forces of about 2,100 men had engaged Union troops to the north. This included engaging Union gunboats with artillery from that earthen battery at Secessionville. No damage was reported, but General Benham believed the artillery at Secessionville would be too dangerous to his men, so he decided to assault it the next day. Before dawn on the 16th, Benham attacked Secessionville with 3,500 men and some gunboats. They were supported by both Wright's division and William's brigade. Stevens, who was leading the attack, easily overran the Confederate pickets and ran into Lamar's troops. The Union troops utilized hedgerows to move closer to the Confederate position, and under the cover of artillery fire from the Union 8th Michigan, they went up to the battery's defensive walls. There, the 8th Michigan and the 79th New York met up and fought desperately against the Confederates, but were ultimately unable to keep the position and were pushed back. Shortly after dawn, a second wave of attack from the Union began, led by Colonel Robert William and his brigade. They flanked the Confederate battery and ravaged the Confederate defenders. Unfortunately, additional Confederate reinforcements arrived at this time that included the 4th Louisiana Battalion. The Union and Confederates began exchanging fire across the marsh, while a second Confederate unit attacked William's men from behind. As if it couldn't get any worse, Confederate siege guns opened up on William's men as well, forcing the Union soldiers to take enemy fire from three directions from front, from behind, and from above. Williams was pushed back, forcing the Union to cancel the rest of their assault plan. Benham withdrew his men from the field before noon that day and was arrested later that day for ignoring commands of General David Hunter. He was sent north for trial. Lamar had won, inflicting 685 killed or wounded on the Union forces while only suffering a loss of 205 killed or wounded. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. 